How's it going everybody? So I'm back. In this video, we're going to talk about tools and then the other miscellaneous items that can go into a get home bag or a bug out bag. Specifically, these are mine, but these are my suggestions based upon weight and other things like that. So we're gonna get into like repairing your bag, you know, um, repair kits, that kind of aspect, um, tools for what uses along with weight, we're going to fire starting, you know, tool maintenance, things like that. What items do I carry to maintain all of these items? Because if you are hiking a long distance, something like that, things break, things wear out. You're going to need to have things to get you moving again. So we're going to push straight into it and I'll show you all the details. All right, everybody, let's push straight in to tools. So you can see there are some gloves, which would be technically categorized as clothing, but I didn't throw them in the clothing video, but I kind of established these as tools or protection. So starting over here on the right hand side. So the Baco Laplander. So this is a specific folding saw. Now, mainly the reason I chose this say over an ax or something like that is this is smaller, it's lighter, it gets the job done a little bit better in my opinion. Now, of course, if you're going to try to cut down an entire tree, this is not the tool that you want to use. But this is very easy to process, you know, medium to very all the way down to small based material, which is normally what you're going to need for a fire anyways. So also when it comes to noise aspect, this is a very less noisy object you know, to slowly cut or even going quickly, you kind of hear that low repetition of the buzzing of a saw rather than, you know, like a saw or a ax, you know, you get that, you get that solid, you know, hit every time. Sound will travel distance. And if you're trying to be quiet about it, a saw is going to be much better off for noise or decibel rating than say an ax is you swinging and cutting on a tree. So that's why I particularly went with this. Now there are other, there are other models out there like um, I think Silky makes specific saws as well. I was just looking for a lightweight um, alternative. They're a little bit heavier slightly than this. So I use this, this is actually a newer one. I actually just replaced it. I had another one that's really beat up and used very well. So I always keep the new stuff in my bag as well. So moving on to a specific knife. Now I've always kind of toyed around what knives I like in bags. And I always end up coming back to this specific knife. And this is an SE4. So it is a little bit beefy. It does have at least a very thick tang as you can see or at least the knife blade itself all the way down is very thick so it's very beefy for a four inch knife but it's nice for batoning with that thickness is you can put it down on a piece of wood and smack it now i get it you're not supposed to use that with knife knives and you're going to like kind of ruin your blade and whatnot this is a higher carbon steel so it's easily to sharpen up and whatnot but i have used this knife extensively i'm talking Every single deployment I've been on, this knife has been with me. And even before that, even before the military aspect, um, I picked up this knife and it's outstanding. Now it is a bit heavy because you can go with a Mora. Like I said, a Mora knife is much more lighter, gonna get the job done, but I always gravitate back to this. So this is 7.4 ounces. Now with the sheath, it's gonna be a little bit more, but it normally does come with a nice plastic sheath as well with a molly or a belt clip or something like that that can fit on there. But in my opinion, this is an outstanding knife for what it is. It is heavy, but I'm willing to take the weight specifically on this one. So moving over to the next, I have a small pocket knife with me. And mainly this is a backup. So this is, a bench made bug out. This is a ultra light, really lightweight tool. It is coming in at 1.9 ounces for this, which is awesome for the amount of blade that I get. So I always carry this in the 
um, chest rig that I run as a backup. Now on me as well, I always carry one. This is my EDC, which is the same exact knife, just in blue. And this is always on me in EDC. So if I'd ever lose this, I do have a backup or it's always in my chest rig. So it's a very, it's bench made. They make very stout base knives. They work very well. This is, the, I just chose it because it's mainly lightweight. So if you're not familiar what chest rig I am talking about, I do have a full kind of video on it, but I'll roll it in here really quick. This is a Hill People Gear chest rig, and we're going to be talking about the stuff in here as well. I already went over electronics and navigation and a whole bunch of other stuff, but there are a few other things in here that we haven't discussed, which I will be going over in this video once I'm done with this section. So moving on over to this, Deuce of Spades. So this is actually just a small lightweight alternative to a small shovel. And this thing is stupid lightweight. As you can see, it weighs 0.6 ounces. And mainly this is a small digging tool, mainly for cat holes or other things like that. But it's so lightweight, it can have multiple other uses. If you need to break ground up for some specific reason, putting something away in the ground, you know, there's all kinds of different stuff and it's just crazy lightweight, really nice to have. I also carry leather gloves with me. So I used to run just the pig gloves, which are really good gloves, but they're not good for heat. These are mainly a good tactical glove or if they're cold outside, you can kind of run with those, which will help you out a lot. But for the fire maintenance aspect, I like leather gloves. Downside is they get wet. If you get these wet, they will retain water. Now you can coat them in a water repellent based uh, spray or silicone or other things like that or oils and it'll help it a lot. But ultimately, I don't wear these any type of rain, but mainly processing with the knives and stuff because this is a second layer of skin too. So if you have a mistake with a knife or something on this, these gloves are probably going to protect you a lot more than just running, you know, bare hands like this. It will for a fact. I've had um, a couple slips with a knife and gloves have saved me multiple times. So mainly I do not have too many tools and this is the main aspect of what I can get by. Like I said, long range, get home back. I'm not setting up shop. I'm moving as quick as I can from point A to point B but being able to maintain what I need to. So like if needed, you could fillet fish with this, you know, skin deer, whatever you need to do. Um, it's it's gonna help out all these tools in specific ways. So let's move on to the odds and ends or the miscellaneous stuff. So we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of other like fire protection as in security wise, you know, maintenance, stuff like that. So let's push into that. All right, so let's talk about the miscellaneous stuff that I have for, you know, specific small tasks or items that I have that don't really fit a category technically. I mean, they are their own category, but overall video wise. So starting up here in the right hand corner, the chest rig that I just showed you that is always on me as the last means or last ditch type of thing. If I have to ditch my bag, what do I have on me is the chest rig. So this is a full mini survival kit. So this has pretty much all the basic needs that is needed to at least survive a night or, you know, get you through something pretty bad. So if I would lose my bag, I would lose all the tools with it. So I want to have a backup means. Now I personally made this myself. I've been kind of into the whole micro um, survival kits for several years and I make them and a few other people, a few friends of mine make them and whatnot. So I kind of pieced it together and got the best quality stuff I can in one. So this always rides in that front pouch just in case I lose everything. This is also um, the kit that I can go to. It'll also fit in a cargo pocket if needed. I mean, as you can see, it's, it's actually smaller than my entire hand. So I always have that with me. I also have these mini chem sticks, which these are really nice for navigation purposes. You can see how small they are, honestly. And I think they glow for like two to four hours, if I recall. But they're nice for marking or just map reading or even just uh, putting them in a pouch. So you don't have to use your flashlight and they don't give off a lot of light, but just enough that you can see. So I have those in there along with a 
full, um, technically, I guess, what would you call it? A fix it kit, I guess is the proper terminology. And this is the fix gear and your bags. So this has, you know, sewing needles, it has specific tape, it has zip ties, um, the larger um, safety pins, like the really heavy duty ones, just in case, like say you break a strap on your, shul on your shoulder or something like that on a backpack, extra buckles. Um, it has, you know, mosquito net, netting, extra pieces of that, um, adhesive, there's a full another um, sewing kit in here as well. There's extra buttons. And this is meant to continue your backpack and your gear. So if I'm going a long distance and I'm gonna be hard on gear, you know, you don't have the luxury of stopping off at a Walmart or something like that just to pick up something new. This is so I can maintain my nylon and other gear like that. Same with kind of this aspect. So this is an easy lap. So these are diamond sharpeners. And this is meant to uh, keep my other tools like sharpening items going. So once you start to doll, if I would ever get that far, like I said, multi-day, hundred of miles, possibly on a backpack, I wanna be able to maintain my tools. And this is ultra lightweight as well. So here is a basic fire kit as well. Nothing too fancy. I have a bunch of... Um, wet fire. These are really nice. These are kind of main, mainly used as an emergency. I have a bunch of Bic lighters kind of just scattered all over the place. I think I have three or four in total. And then the ferro rod and then a candle, which most people don't put a candle in here. I have a small stick candle, which is really nice, is because you can light the candle instead of like using up matches constantly. Oh, like light a match. Oh, it went out. Light a match. It went out. Light light the candle and then you have a flame for however long this candle lasts which this one probably lasts you know many many hours so as you're lighting your fire your candle can be burning so you don't have to keep using all these other tools like wet fire or the lighter over and over and over and over again using the fuel so that's what i put in there some also some fat wood so this is a very small kit but I've used it extensively for almost 20 years, this specific kit, and it I just replace the things out of it when I need it. Moving down to here, so there's a small signal mirror, which is also nice for getting objects in your eye or you, places that you can't see. A small mirror is really nice for hygiene purposes as well, but if you also get stranded somewhere and you need to signal for help, it is a solid means of signaling. Now there is a small device in here that actually has a wax um, container, which if you can uh, kind of vial, and this will let you know if you boiled your water properly or for long enough. You dip this wire in there and you can actually see it. And when the wax specifically melts and then goes to the other end, means the water has been properly boiled and purified for you to drink. Is this a necessity? No, but it's super lightweight and it's nice to have in case I'm using, you know, maybe mainly a murky based water, not using my filters. This can help you out notifying you. Yeah, it's muddy, but you're still good to go on the whole, you know, small particles or bacteria or viruses and stuff like that killed off inside it. So moving over, this is a small fishing kit in an Altoids can that I specifically put together myself. Um, I was a big fisherman back in the day, did it a lot, need to get back into it, but uh, I put a lot of good quality stuff in here. So another thing that the tin can be used for as well is if you poke a hole in the specific side of this and put fabric in here or charcoal or other uh, punky wood-based material, you can make charred wood or char cloth, which will massively help you along your way for the fire kit, which is over here. I was looking for it. So that can kind of go together as well. So the fishing kit, I also have speed hooks or what people are familiar with in uh, um, ice fishing. Gosh, I can't think of the word. But for ice fishing, a lot of people use these and they're like an auto set device pretty much. You spring them down, attach them. So when the fish tugs on it, they automatically um, jerk the hook for you. So it's a passive means of collecting food while you're off maybe doing something else like looking for berries or you know just in general maintaining your gear this is a passive way to constantly collect food 
while you're doing something else, with it, which is a huge, awesome contributor. So just heads up, also, most states, these are illegal to use unless you're ice fishing or other season-based stuff. You can't just drop these in the water and just go for it. But like I said, emergency-based stuff, if it's seriously life or death, I'm not worried about the legal aspects of me catching a fish with an auto, you know, hook setter rather than it being like illegal or something like that. Not too concerned about it. So let's push on down into the bottom here. And this is going to be my kind of a protection or a security measure. So these are a tripwire device. So they're spring loaded and whatnot. So you would take a cotter pin and you can spring these up as you can see right at the top up in here, there's a little hole. So you can string this attach it to a tree and then run your Kevlar line like I have here, very thin, hard to see because it is green. So put it very low to the ground and it uses um, primers or shotgun primers in the base here and unscrews and you can place one in there. So these are actually fairly loud. You can see um, kind of like a firing pin kind of aspect inside here, but it gives a specific location or a sound when someone walks over it where the line it pulls out boom it goes off it almost sounds like a 22 going off so if you set these up in proper locations around your camp and say you're sleeping you can hear like you know behind me to the right or to the south and depending on how you set these up which i have four of them planning to get six here pretty soon you can fully set up a 360 perimeter almost 100 meters or 50 meters out from your camp to let you know a hostel or just an individual or something is coming into your camp, which is nice when you're sleeping, have a passive means of security. Now, it's not the best, but if you're alone, this is a really good way to set it up. Moving back over here to the right-hand side, I have small uh, kind of barable based items, which is assortment of cash and silver. So in case cash is just not utilized anymore or not recognized as a means of, you know, monetary value anymore, maybe a collapse, blah, blah, blah. There's multiple ways. I just carry two things. Silver is always a precious metal along with gold. It's always going to be worth something regardless if it's worth how much you paid it or not anything technically later on, but it's still going to be worth an amount of something. So it's always been a precious metal. But this, all these items are kind of my miscellaneous stuff that I keep in my bag. And as you can see, they're all packaged in um, plastic. So water does not get into them, corrode them, and ruin them. Even this actually has a specific bag that it goes in. And it also has duct tape that I wrap around it or electrical tape to seal out the water from going inside it in case it would get drenched with water. So these are all the small little items that I carry to assist me in going from point A to point B in a get home bag, bug out bag situation. Like I said, these are all items that I carry and I would recommend you looking into for your own bags because I have tested these. All this stuff is proven in all the videos that you've seen. I have massively tested a lot of this gear and it works very well. Now I'm constantly upgrading and doing stuff like that. But when that comes out, I might do another series. But up to date right now, this is 100% what I use. So if you guys enjoy this type of content, please hit that like and hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what you carry, what you like to carry, or maybe I've missed something. I would really like to hear from y'all, and I hope you all have a great day.